welcome to Park Hoppers at Home. This is the very first episode. If you're watching this and you don't know what this channel is all about, it's going to be all about Disney. We're going to be basically talking about all the stuff that us park hoppers do at home when we're not actually in the parks, but we're still wishing that we were. We'll showcase different products from Disney themselves. We'll talk about custom made products that people are making out there like on Etsy. We will do just fun chats about Disney live streamers. We'll talk about news that's going on in the parks. And the biggest part of this channel are going to be the projects that we do together uh, that I have come up with and then hopefully you guys will suggest some projects or even send me projects you've done so that we can talk about those. So before we dive into the project for this episode, I want to talk about the project that started it all. It was the inspiration for me to start this channel, and that's the Disney wall that's right behind me. All right, everybody, this is the Disney wall that I cherish and love so much. It was my very first Disney home project. Uh, sorry if the camera is shaky or anything, guys. I don't have a gimbal or anything. And I'm new to the whole YouTube thing, so I've got a lot to learn. So anyway, let's go ahead and start with these pictures up here. Now, these were the very first piece. Um, well, so to speak, it was this big one right here, but we'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, when I was uh, randomly looking on Etsy, I found these pictures. And they were from a store called Craft Central Company. Craft Central Company. They're not on Etsy anymore. They have their own website. I'm going to post a link in the description for them. Go check them out. They've got an awesome uh, collection of stuff. Not just Disney. They've got Universal. They've got just random movie posters. Uh, their collection is awesome and they do all kinds of different sizes and uh, stuff like that. The frames for these pictures I did get from Michael's. I will post a link to that as well. I went with these, um, sorry, these frames because they, uh, they actually have no border. So they all mesh together like a quilt. So these pictures are all supposed to be retro, um, retro attraction pictures. Some of the attractions are not actually from, you know, the retro days of Disney World, but uh, they've styled them to look like that. And I love them so much and I uh, you know I was buying them in chunks a couple at a time and then when I finally had uh, the entire set that I wanted I went ahead and put them up now I've got a section missing right there I'm hoping to get some of the resort hotels so as we move down this shelf was not here when I originally started I need to get a different kind of shelf because as you can see it's kind of blocking my pictures but I've just kind of put some of my Disney things up here um, just stuff from the parks. I will give a shout out to my sister. She got me this and this pen. This right here is just one of the gold bars for the um, 50th anniversary that they're selling in Magic Kingdom. I don't know if you can tell, but it's supposed to be one of the old tickets. And I can't open it with one hand. But we'll look at that another day. I uh, got a couple, uh, couple pop vinyls. Uh, I started to collect these for the 50th anniversary and kind of stopped myself because I knew I'd get in trouble. But I heard there are some new ones coming out that I'm probably going to get. And then we'll showcase them on the channel. A uh, drum from Animal Kingdom that we got my son because he was really into drumming when we last went. And uh, he did not really end up caring about it. So now it's mine. Got... This thing that I got to do something with, this is a back scratcher. This was one of the products they actually sold when Walt Disney World opened. So, had to get that. Picture frame with no picture. <laughs> got to get something to put in there. And then I've actually started collecting Disney books. And we'll get to that in another episode. There are a lot of good books coming out. Stuff that if you're a Disney World fan, you're really going to be interested in. Um photo album from our last trip another pop vinyl and then we will get into these uh, in the next episode I'll reveal what those are but then there's junk down here because I'm still still working on getting it cleaned up but anyway moving on to the wall 
Uh, those two pennants up there are um, also from the retro store that got set up on Main Street in Magic Kingdom. I've got my Disney World retro poster picture right there and then those two pictures which are my two favorite actually out of the entire uh, wall. Also got this. It's one of those, um, I guess you can call it a placemat. Also something else that they sold when the park opened. So uh, on Main Street in that vintage store, they're selling these. On the other side is actually that map. So I put that there as a placeholder because that's a section of the wall I need to work on. But most recently, I've added this addition. Now, if you've been to Disney World and stayed in the resorts on site, you know what this is. This is the resort information channel. It plays 24-7 in the resorts, uh, showing park information and information about the day. And there is a channel on YouTube now called WDW Today, and they stream this live 24-7. So I immediately took out this old little TV that I had that I wasn't using anymore, and threw it on there and it now streams in our house 24 seven. I could not be a bigger Disney nerd and I'm okay with that. And it does have the music as well. I usually keep it turned down, but I got the remote hidden back here. Let's see. I don't know if you guys can hear that. So yeah, this is probably um, my favorite piece of the wall right now. I'm pretty proud of this. But anyway, that is the Disney wall. I am still going to um, work on it, do some, you know, modifications, rearranging at times. I have got to get rid of that shelf and get something else. Um, and I'm sorry also that the lighting in this room is terrible and it just got worse. But uh, anyway, if you've got any questions, shoot them down in the comments below. Make sure you check out the website for Craft Central Company. They are fantastic. And let's go ahead and get back to the rest of the episode. All right, everybody. So hopefully you enjoyed that little video. I'm pretty proud of my Disney wall back there. I talk about it way too much. It was, like I said, the inspiration for what started this channel. During that first uh, stretch of COVID around the time where Disney World was also shut down like everything else, I spent a lot of time online watching old Disney live streams and watching old videos and then that led to me just looking at random stuff on websites like Etsy and that's where I started thinking about all the stuff that I'd like to do around the house, stuff that my wife would allow me to do and uh, that's where the wall came from. And then from the wall, I decided, man, I want to show this to all the other Disney fans out there. And here we are. So hopefully you enjoyed that. But what I want to do now is jump into our first project. Um, it, will it will require a little bit of a backstory. So let's jump right into that now. Hey everybody, so let's go ahead and talk about our first project on the channel. Um, I was online one day and stumbled upon different people who were taking entire walls in their home and painting them to look like Spaceship Earth. And naturally, I wanted to do that. But when I asked my wife if it was okay to take up an entire wall and paint it to make it look like Spaceship Earth, she said no. So I decided to go with the next best thing and just kind of take a piece of plywood and paint it on it. And as you can see, it did not turn out great. So I kind of gave up on it instead of finishing it. Um, for one, I didn't really care for the colors that I had picked. Uh, I tried to go with my own kind of color scheme instead of using what was recommended. Uh, the plywood itself was probably not the best idea, even though I did sand it and prime it. The paint just really, it, it doesn't have the best sheen to it. It was chipping in all the different places once I started to pull the tape. 
Um, and as you can see, I just, I kind of gave up even after putting one or two coats on it. So we're going to try it again and we're going to try and do things a little differently. So we're going to learn from the mistakes that I made on this one. And we're going to go step by step on how to do the exact same thing. But instead of using plywood, I'm going to use MDF board. All right, everyone, and welcome to my garage, or as I like to call it, the not really a workshop workshop. Uh, any mess that you may see during the making of this video, please excuse it. I am in the middle of a garage makeover and it's really gross and rainy outside as we're filming this. So I'm not even going to bother opening the garage door. But anyway, this is the MDF board that we are going to be using rather than plywood. I love using MDF uh, for DIY projects. It's extremely smooth. Um, so no sanding is required. It's extremely durable. However, MDF will absorb a ton of moisture. So before we began this project, I decided since we're using water-based paints and things like that, I was going to seal it. I used this right here. All I did was apply a coat, wait one hour, apply a second coat, wait 24 hours. And uh, that should seal it real good. So the first thing we are going to do is a coat of primer. All right, guys, now that we have the coat of primer down, the first step is painting the entire thing black. All right, everybody. So we laid down our black base layer. The reason that we did that was one, it's going to be a better place for the grays that you pick out to rest on top of rather than the primer. I think it's really going to make them pop a little better. And then two, what we're doing next is we're laying down our grid pattern for the triangles using quarter inch painters tape. You can get this off of Amazon. And then once we're done painting our triangles and we pull that tape, we're going to be left with our black uh, lines here that cut in between all the triangles. Now the next step uh, is going to require you to do some measuring and you got to make some decisions. So with these triangles here, they were six inch triangles. And the reason I went with six inch triangles is because I scaled it down from instructions I found online that somebody put out to paint an entire spaceship earth wall. I decided for this project, uh, since I went with a two by four piece instead of the two by two I used here, that I'm gonna make the triangles a little bit bigger. Uh, I feel like this kind of turned out to look a little bit like a mess. And I decided for this one, we're gonna do 10 inch triangles rather than the six inch that I did here. Now feel free to do any triangle size that you want. You could even do tiny ones and have just hundreds of them running across your uh, arm although it would be really difficult and you probably wouldn't be able to use this. So 10 inch triangles, rather than starting at the top and measuring uh, 10 inches down to lay your first line, I'm actually going to measure down two inches, lay my first line, and then go another 10 inches to lay the second. Um, and the reason for that is I want the top and the bottom to actually be cut through triangles so that it looks more natural in a sense. It's, I want it to look like I took a piece of Spaceship Earth off and just threw it on my wall. So it, rather than the triangle starting at the top and being even all the way down, I'm just going to make it kind of more cut through on the top and the bottom and see how that turns out. So let's go ahead and begin with taping off our grid pattern. All right, guys. So like I said, I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to go two inches for my first line and I'm gonna make the mark right here on the side of the board where I'll be able to see it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do my first 10 inch line and then my second. So again, that's two inches from the top and then I go, I make my first line across. I'm gonna go 10 inches for my 10 inch triangle, do another line and another 10 inches for the next line. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing over here on the other side so that I know that my lines will end up being straight all the way down. Now, if they're a little bit crooked, 
you know, that's okay. It just depends on how picky you are. I know how I am and these lines probably won't be very straight, but I'm gonna try. Now that I think about it, guys, if you really wanna get technical and go with a little amateur trick that I like to use, go ahead and lay down a ruler, mark it down where it's supposed to be, clamp it down so it stays straight, and just run your line right across it. All right, guys, so our first sets of lines are down and that's the easy part. Couple things to note. I tucked the tape underneath a pretty good bit just to make a tight hold, hopefully you can see that. And then every time that I laid down a line, I wanted to run my finger across and make sure that tape is on there real good. That way none of the paint is gonna bleed underneath it and require us to do um, extra touch-ups and take more time. Next thing we're gonna do is measure out our diagonal lines. We're gonna go this way, one way, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing in the other direction to get that crisscross pattern to get the big triangles laid out. All right, everybody. So you can't see what I did, so I'm going to explain it to you. Since well, I decided I was going to do 10 inch triangles, I'm going to have to measure now this way, 10 inches across. So if I start with my bottom line, right against the edge, every 10 inches, I placed a dot on my tape until I ran out of room. Now, here's the trick. In order to get the true diamond pattern for our triangles, when I go to my next line, I placed a dot at five inches, that's half of my 10 inch triangle. So if you're doing a different size triangle for your project, just remember, uh, you'll cut whatever number that is in half. From that dot, then I did my 10 inch dots. Every 10 inches laid a dot. And then I went back to measuring from the edge for the next line and placed a dot every 10 inches. So for whatever project you're doing, whatever size it may be, know a couple things, okay? Start with the bottom for your best reference. Start measuring from the edge and put a dot at the space of whatever size triangle you're making. Every other line, you wanna divide that size of your triangle in half and go over that many inches, place your first dot and then that's your edge for the rest of that line and then you just place a dot at your regular spacing interval. And you do that every other line. So for this project, it's really easy. I've only got three lines, so my middle one is my only offset line. Now that I've got those dots in place, and I'm sorry you guys can't see them, uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tape off. So starting from my first dot, and I'm just gonna go across, instead of going straight up to the next dot, obviously that wouldn't work, I'm just gonna go across the board all the way. And then, I'm gonna start over here and do the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so as you saw, we laid out our big triangles. This is what the final bit looks like. I even started the next step right here which is going to be taping off the small triangles within our large one, okay? Now for this step, you're gonna to have to do a little bit of experimenting and uh, you'll have a little bit of trial and error. The instructions that I saw online, I could not follow because of the size triangle that I decided to go with. So, what the, well the idea really is just to get your three triangles to look like they're the same size or make them the exact same size if uh, you're that good at math and you're uh, dimensions work for you. So what I ended up doing was measuring six inches from the top of the triangle and laying a piece of tape straight down. So again, six inches from the top down and then connecting my corners and that's my center point of the large triangle and the top part of my three small ones. And I think that looks pretty good but again you can experiment with it and don't be afraid to you know, try again. Um, if you've got, you know, a spare piece of wood or you can do it on a piece of paper, even anything, and you want to experiment with different sizes, go ahead and do that. But the idea really, like I said, is just to get your three triangles to look the exact same. Um, I will note one other thing. 
uh, that I did that I really don't care for. I think it's going to make the project a little difficult uh, in the future. I'm going to move the camera here. As you can see, my bottom and top both have cut off parts of the triangle. And anything that I read online, it said that their uh, top part and one side were cut off. The way I did this, I don't care for it too much. What I should have done was started at the bottom and measured 10 inches and let just the top piece get cut off. And then as a part of that, that would have ended up having one side cut off. So we're going to see how this turns out. I don't want to start over for the sake of the video. If I don't like it, then I'll just, you know, do another one. But just keep that in mind when you're uh, doing your piece. Don't be afraid to lay it out, look at it, and decide whether or not you like it and decide whether or not you're going to change it. So just as an example, you can look at what I've got laid out here compared to what I did here where I did it evenly and I had nothing cut off except for my side triangles on each side. So um, it's going to look a little strange like this, but let's just see how it turns out. You never know. Once we toss the paint on there, it might end up looking really good. So let me go ahead and finish laying out these small triangles and then we'll get to the fun part, which is laying down our paint. All right, guys, before we start painting, I did two things. I took a small brush and I went back over all of my grid line tape and left a coat of black. The reason for that is because all of our grays are going to end up bleeding through this tape and causing us to do some extra touch ups later. So to prevent that, lay down another coat of black. And I know it seems like we're using a lot of black paint, but trust me, it's going to be helpful. And I left these uncovered so that you'll be able to see that difference. And then we'll end up just touching up those two lines later. Next, you have to pick your pattern. I'm going to post in the comments or sorry, in the description, the pattern that I used. Basically, it's the entire set of instructions I found online for painting an entire spaceship Earth wall. So once you have your pattern picked out, you know which color you want to put in each triangles. I recommend going ahead and laying it out. So my method here was my lightest gray, since that's going to be what we do first. I left empty and then the vertical lines are going to be my medium and my horizontal lines are going to be my darkest gray. And I took each triangle and just made it identical to that pattern. So all of my triangles facing down are one way, all of my triangles facing up are the other. And if I follow this pattern and if I didn't mess it up, I'm, I've double checked it. I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. But if I don't mess it up, we should get that 3D pattern. And when we put this on the wall, it's going to look like Spaceship Earth. So double check it, maybe even triple check it. Make sure you have the pattern just how you want it. And there's no right way or wrong way. You just got to do what you want and what you think is going to look best. And then we can go ahead and start painting. For the first coat being the lightest of all the grays, from everything I've read online, from all the instructions, it's okay to just lay that paint down. It can be messy. You don't have to worry about staying in the lines because you're actually going to cover uh, anything that bleeds over. So in this case, my white, I can just take a roller and I can just go all the way down and sure, I'm gonna cover up the tops of some of these triangles, but then I'm gonna end up painting over it when I do these. So it's okay to be a little messy for the first color. Um, have fun with it. Let's go ahead and get started. guys we got the first color down and it's time for us to go with our second gray remember when you're doing this go from your lightest to your darkest there's gonna be three colors total I don't know if I've even mentioned that if I 
If I haven't, I'm sorry, but yes, there are three different grays that we're gonna be using for this. This, of course, like I said, is the lightest one. You can kind of see the pattern that I went with here. You know, the tops of the triangles that are facing down and then, um, you know, just straight down the sides here. Again, you'll see the instructions uh, um, in the link that I post and see how they did it. And you'll get an idea of how you want yours to look. But anyway, time for us to lay our second gray down. Again, I'm gonna do all these vertical spots. And the important thing to remember is now I have to be careful. I don't want it to bleed over into what I've already painted. So instead of being messy and free going like I was here, uh, I'm gonna take my time, make sure we do it right. All right guys, two colors down, only one to go. Make sure as you're going along, let that brush run over the tape. It's okay, it does look messy right now, but once we pull all this tape off, each and every triangle is gonna be clean, cut, and defined. So let the brush run over a little bit. There is gonna be some touch-up work you have to do after, and that's okay. Uh, make sure you're putting two coats of paint on each triangle. By the time I get to the end of painting all the triangles, the first ones I painted are dry, so I just go over it again. One color left, let's see how it turns out. All right guys, all of our paint is down. We're gonna let it dry and then it's time to pull the tape and see how we did. Well guys, I would say that it uh, it turned out pretty well. I'm extremely happy with it. It's a lot better than the first one over there. Doing it on MDF rather than plywood, huge improvement all by itself. The way the paint laid out and it hit all the brush, uh, brush strokes, it was fantastic. There was a little bit of cleaning up I had to do once I pulled the tape. I just used one of these little brushes right here and I uh, just, you know, dabbled it in or dabbed it into the uh, paint lid and uh, that was it took about 10 minutes but it's done it looks fantastic i'm pretty happy with it and that is it for the very first episode of park hoppers at home and that's it for our first project at least for now um, if you enjoyed the episode please hit the thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you think you'd be interested in seeing some of the projects i do in the future this was more of a smallish to mediumish type project. I've got a lot of stuff lined up that I want to get done, including hopefully a landscaping project that I want to do in the spring or summer coming up next year. So we'll see if I can make that happen. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. And um, oh, if you yourself are interested in taking a trip to Disney World anytime soon or in the future, um, please let me know. I am a Travelmation travel agent. I am happy to put together a quote for you and of course all the services are completely free and you know we'll talk more about that in a future episode. Um, but if you're interested in going to Disney World or really traveling anywhere just let me know. You can find me at facebook.com slash parkhoppertrips. But again thank you thank you so much for watching this first episode. This is something I've wanted to do and thought about for about a year and a half, two years. Finally getting the courage to do it. I still need to uh, learn a few things and um, really get past all the whole nervousness about throwing yourself out there on the internet. But 
once we get through all that, hopefully the channel will be fantastic. So again, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.